This lecture orients you to how a network model can represent the impact of various variables on each other. This presentation was prepared by Dr. Alain. How can we decide if the relationship between two variables is causal? In order to answer this question, the relationship must meet four criteria. First, the two variables must be associated with each other. Lack of association indicates that the two variables are independent from each other and therefore do not have a causal effect on each other. Causes must precede effects. Causes cannot follow the effect. A relationship is judged to be more likely to be causal if the presumed cause precedes the effect. If one variable causes another, then it must have a mechanism through which this occurs. We are more willing to accept a causal interpretation if the mechanism of the effect is described and is known to produce the effect. The fourth criterion is commonly known as counterfactual. It states that when the cause is absent, the effect should not occur. Counterfactual cannot be observed because we see the causal effect only when it is present. We have to speculate what would have happened if the cause was not present. Counterfactual distinguishes causal relationships from associations. When two variables are associated, changes in one co-occurs with the changes in another. This is not true for co causal effects. In causal relationship, changing the effect does not change the cause. For example, homelessness and suicides are associated, yet reducing homelessness does not reduce suicide. In contrast, mental illness causes both homelessness and suicides. Reducing mental illness could reduce suicides. Often the test of counterfactual relationship is done through removing confounding in the data, showing that no other variable can explain the observed causal effect. A causal network is a collection of interrelated causes and their effects. There may be multiple outcomes. There could be multiple causes of the same effect or a cause can have multiple effects. By interrelated, we mean that one cause can have an effect that can cause another effect, sort of like a chain effect. Variables that are not related to the network are simply ignored, as they are not relevant. They are neither associated or cause of anything that's modeled in the network. Causal graphs can be drawn from independence assumptions. If two variables are directly related to each other, they are shown by a directed link. If they are indirectly related to each other, you can start from one variable and follow the links and reach to the other. If two variables are unrelated, then there should be no link between them, and one cannot follow the links shown in a graph to reach from one to the other. The cause and effect are shown by a directional arrow between the two nodes, each node designating a variable. Here we see the effect of variable A on variable B. The direction of the arrow shows the causal impact of one variable on another. The absence of the arrow indicates that the two variables are just associated. The two variables C and D are associated and we do not know if there is a causal relationship among them. Finally, the absence of a link between the two variables indicates that the two variables E and F are independent from each other. This display shows that medication errors lead to prolonged hospital stay. There are two variables shown, medication error and a long hospital stay. The link between the two shows that these two variables are associated with each other. 
The arrow in the link shows that the medication error causes long hospital stays, but not vice versa. It's not correct that long hospital stays cause medication errors. Here we are showing two competing causes of long hospital stays. Patients may stay longer in the hospital because they had had a medication error or they are sicker than average hospitalized patient. There are two causes for the same effect and this situation is referred to as common effect. Some refer to it as the V relationship among three variables. Note that this graph also shows that the probability of medication error is independent of severity of the patient's illness. This is implied by the fact that there is no link between severe illness and medication error. If this is not true, then the network must be redrawn. If we think that this is not correct, we can insert a causal link between severity of the patient's illness and the frequency of medication error. Now the graph shows not only an association between severity of the patient's illness and medication error, but a causal relationship. Let us add provider fatigue into the network. As the number of variables increases, a causal network can describe the relationship among any pair of the variable. Here the provider fatigue is shown to cause medication errors, and medication errors are shown to cause long hospital stays. These three variables are said to be in a causal chain. Fatigue causes errors, and errors cause longer stays. Provider fatigue is an indirect cause of long hospital stay. Provider fatigue changes length of hospital stay through the mediating variable medication error. Provider fatigue is a direct cause of medication error, and medication error is a direct cause of long hospital stay. Another way of saying the same thing is that provider fatigue is the indirect cause of long hospital stays and this effect is mediated by the presence of medication errors. A typical network shows a lot more independence than it shows causal relationship. Here we see five direct causal relationships shown by five links between pairs of variables. What we do not see is a lot more. We do not see a direct causal impact between provider fatigue and long hospital stay, although these two variables are correlated. What is not shown has meaning and implies lack of direct causal relationship. Here, for example, we show no relationship between provider fatigue and severe illness. These two variables are independent from each other. There is no way that we can start from either variable and end with the other. The absence of a link in a network implies independence and vice versa. Independence implies a particular network. Counterfactual modifies the notion of association. Here we see a cause and effect relationship where any time the cause decreases, the effect increases. For example, any time we go into recession, more people seek service sector jobs. If this relationship is causal, then increases in the effect should not necessarily lead to decreases in the cause. So if we see many people applying for health services jobs, we should not assume that we are in recession. When two variables are associated, Changes in the effect modifies the likelihood of observing the cause and vice versa. Think of association as seesaw. In causal relationship, this is not necessarily true. Changes in effect do not change the frequency of the cause. The seesaw model does not apply as changes in the effect 
do not cause any change at all. Only changes in the cause affect the frequency of the effects. In our analysis of causal effects, we ignore cycles. This is not to say that in real life there are no cycles of causal effects. There are there. Time breaks cycles. If we think of time increasing, then as we move through a causal chain, we do not end up at the place we start, as now A is occurring at a later time period. Even though we do not consider causal cycles, the models and methods we develop can be used to analyze causal cycles over time. In network models, both what is shown and what is not shown has meaning.